before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. We're laughing. You probably see multiple Jessicas on the screen right now because we've been trying off camera to pull up the appropriate website. And listen, I hate to say this, Jessica, but you and I are both at that certain age bracket where we need like a permanent 12 year old with us to show us how to work on a computer. Oh, yeah. Hi, How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me today. This is um, this is really sweet. I appreciate it. I'm excited. This is going to be kind of a more lighthearted um, episode today, guys. It's been a been a dark week. Um, I I got the message loud and clear, and I'm going to do this. I think this is a fantastic idea. Jessica and I were talking off camera, as you guys know. My friend, y'all's friend, Doug Kramer, did pass away way too soon. And as you guys know, on his channel, Days But Not Confused, he would play the Xenu game. Or any time he said Xenu, you had to take a shot of whatever beverage you chose or whatever, you know, he also would pr promote the wacky tobacco for whatever you know, or maybe that's just a bite of chocolate, or maybe, you know, every time you hear a Zeno, just give somebody a hug. I don't know. But in honor of Doug, I am going to, oh, first, let me explain to you guys if you don't know who Zeno is. And I'm not, I was a never in. I was never in Scientology, but I do know, I do know that Zeno was like their sacred overlord galactic being that threw all the souls into a vol volcano on the Thetans into a volcano on Earth that exploded. He's a bad guy, but he's kind of like, also not supposed to be it's strange anyway he's kind of like their lucifer i think but um but it apparently from what i understand it, it, you learned about xenu and level three which was how far doug had got to and they they consider the confidential levels and you can't tell anybody about it because if you tell someone about it they'll like die of cancer or something i don't know it's really crazy but uh so south park did a great episode on it so Doug would play the Xeno game, and anytime someone says Xeno, you had to take a shot or a drink. Now, I, I know I'm going to get shit for this. I didn't have any alcohol on me, but I did have a Diet Coke. So, Doug, Xeno, 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 my friend, this one is for you. Cheers, Doug. <sighs> and um, I was talking to a friend this morning, and um, even though this is a lighthearted show, I'll go, I'll go ahead and share this with, because Jessica's one of us as well. You know, we want to, you know, if we want to honor Doug's name, we continue just to tell the truth and continue to show the same type of courage and bravery that he showed every day of his life, standing up to these corporations and these religions and these cults and these, you know, other words I can't say on YouTube that, um, that we're up against. And so just keep spreading the truth, guys, and keep laughing. And, you know, maybe if I remember throughout the rest of this episode, I'll continue to randomly say Xenu. Oh, so, all right, Jessica. Well, everybody knows you as the cryptic huntress. You're a remote viewer. You're a Bigfoot hunter. You have all this, this experience. But there's also something else that you do. Do you want to share with our audience what that is? Well, I'm actually an entrepreneur as well. I have a small business. And, uh, and that is called War Woman Goods. Okay. And, uh, and that is my shop. That's actually how I make a living. Okay. For the most part. <clears throat> and so, uh, it's called War Woman Goods. I started this shop back in, I think it was 2016 or 2015, I guess. And, um, 
It was because of my love of Native American jewelry. I love turquoise so much. And uh, and I had so much of it at the time. I had a lot that I had accumulated throughout my my childhood and my my young my young lady days, you know, like back when I was a, a young woman. I'm just an old lady now, okay? Obviously, just kidding. But um but yeah, I I had just accumulated a lot of jewelry and my between my mom and I too, my mom um was very much into jewelry when I was growing up. Um I decided, well, you know, I don't need all this. Um I don't need all this jewelry. I'd love to share it with people. Um, there's no point. You can't wear all of it every day. And right. so I, I opened up an Etsy shop um, back when my, my son was, I mean, he was probably about a year old, I guess, at the time. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been, uh, I've, the shop's been going strong ever since. So... Yeah. Guys, we were trying to pull up her actual website on Etsy, but my laptop is really old, and that's why you have different Jessicas up. And so I pulled it up on Instagram, and I was telling Jessica I made the mistake because I'm old as I'm old too, Jessica. I made the mistake of logging out of my Instagram on my laptop, and I can't remember the password to log back in. So instead of messing it up, I'm just leaving myself logged. I'm logged in on my cell phone. That's what's important. So, um, so I, but you guys, I'm going to be putting all, the, obviously all these links down in the description box below for you to go to, but what, I mean, do you know much about the turquoise um, stone? Do you know much about its, its pr properties? Cause it's big. That has become up so much in my research that the, especially with the Navajo, that turquoise was considered to be a very powerful um stone and color and just the essence of it um for the for for good properties for holding like a more positive uh healing property yeah it's very high vibrational and uh turquoise was always worn it was worn by uh and it still is worn by native american culture um for protection it's actually like a protection amulet and so that's why i've always loved turquoise because i've needed as much protection as i can use okay uh, for the most part. But yeah, there's just, there's so many different types of turquoise. There's turquoise mines all over the Southwest, especially the United States. Um, I mean, we even, there's a lot of turquoise that comes out of like Turkey, you know, and uh, India and different places like that too. But the biggest mines actually are in the Southwest. Um, I, so, I, I remember as a little kid growing up in this area, like the Cherokee used a lot of turquoise. And I remember going to like certain Cherokee shops um, as a kid and getting turquoise rings and stuff and so this is this is was a very commonly known that this was a very very important um natural resource i mean i i believe that anyway crystals and rocks are natural resources given to us by god you know um now where did you get the name war woman from where did that come from oh my gosh well the a war woman actually comes from cherokee culture and uh and that is a Actually, women were or, or always are have been uh, revered, and uh, this the the war woman. Okay, so I'm I'm going to be full disclosure here. Okay, um, War Woman Road is near where I go bigfooting sometimes. Okay, and so that was I'm actually a secret. I didn't I didn't let that out for a long time. So now I'm speaking publicly, y'all. Okay, Bryce, uh, it's actually uh, there's there's a lot of bigfoots up in that area. Okay, and so uh, that's that's near where we we do some bigfooting and stuff like that. So, uh, so I've learned what a war woman was by traveling through that road on the way to do some bigfooting, actually, and uh, and that's up in uh, Clayton, Georgia. For people who aren't familiar with that, um, so yeah, uh, I did my research after I started doing some bigfooting up in that area, and I was like, wow, what a cool title because war woman was given to a um, a woman. Um, it was it's Cherokee tradition, but, uh, but you get the, you become a war woman, you get the name of war woman. Um, you get to serve ceremonial that's called the black drink, I believe is what they call it. Uh, you get to decide if like, if you have prison, okay, this sounds horrible, right? Okay. But if you have prisoners, uh, you decide if that prisoner dies or lives. I mean, it's a, it's a very prestigious title to have. Um, lots of respect comes with being a war woman. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are pictures of Clayton, I believe. Is yeah. Clayton? Yeah. I do. Oh, I, I'm, familiar with, I'm actually familiar with War Woman Road up in, Cl in Clayton, Georgia. And I, none of these pictures are actually doing the area justice. <laughs> no. One of the most beautiful, um, areas in, in, in this, in the state, I believe. And it's up there cornered and nestled with North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. We have a little tip of North Carolina that touches down on Georgia. 
Um, if you could see right here, that little star there of where, where, where Clayton is. And we are up there all the time. My boyfriend actually used to own land up there in Tiger, Georgia, which is right near, right beside Clayton. And um, he actually, I kid you not, Jessica, he, he went camping up there last night by himself because my ass ain't going to get out there in the freezing cold. I'm just not going to do that. So, and he, he came back this morning saying that he, uh, he had a very psychedelic experience. He went way off trail, but he's very familiar with that area because he is up there all the time. And he, uh, he, he was, he was laughing that he was going to go find his Yeti uh, because he was going to be up there by himself because he is, he's also very fascinated with like, Bigfoot and that kind of stuff because he spent a lot of time up there. And those mountains, and we've talked about this on other episodes on Gnostic TV as well, Jessica, but the Appalachian Mountains, that area, it's so mystical and powerful, isn't it? It is. And I would I would warn him not to go camping by himself if he doesn't I have to. I tried to warn him, girl. I was like, I was more concerned about the feral people. I was like, whatever. Bigfoot, no. like, those feral people, they'll fucking kill you and eat you. Like, <laughs> oh my God. They will. Well, I've never come across any feral people up there. Not to say there's not any. But uh, but the energies up there, there are certain places in that area that I would never camp out by myself. Never. I mean, and I've spent a lot of time up there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Do you know where Glassy it, Road is or Glassy Road Mountain? Glassy Mountain? I'm, I'm familiar. Yes. So that's where he went. It's okay. on the road and he, go, he goes off trail. I hate, we would go up there. I hate going up there. I don't like that road. I will pitch a fit like a three-year-old. There are other places I'd rather go. For some reason, I always get a headache when I'm up there at Glassy Mountain. I always get like, it's beautiful, but I just don't like it. And oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't take my son camping up there. I won't. No, it's because it's dangerous. There's just, there's something, and I'm not saying it's like dangerous, dangerous. Like don't ever take your family up there. Yeah. It's just, I'm not comfortable taking my son up there and sleeping in a tent in right. some of those areas because it's the energetics of the place. It's not just the Bigfoots. There's a lot of Bigfoots up there, but it's not just the Bigfoots. It's the energetics of the land. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what's going on up there, but, uh, but there's something, there's something going on for sure. So now I feel like I can pat myself on the back. I wasn't just being a hormonal woman. <laughs> I was, yeah, no. Do you know where you on something? I know. Do you know where Raven Rock is up there? Where they shot uh, um they shot that's that famous scene from um Deliverance, the famous scene. You guys know what I'm talking about where the rap rapids go through. Yeah, I have not been there, I don't think, but I've I've heard about it. The guys have talked about it. That's where we go a lot. It's a pretty easy hike and it's not I'll tell you guys a, a funny story though. So we go up there cause it, it comes into a river. So it's rapids, it's clean water. It's, it's, so it's nice. You can, you hike down and you're there on the beach of the river at rapids. You can kind of sit out there. If it's hot outside, get some sun, have a picnic, hang out for a few hours. We usually hang out and then you walk back up to the car and go. Um, well, this one time we were down there and we've been down there for a couple of hours and we were with, uh, my boyfriend's best friend, a guy named Josh, who does the opening song to my channel. And we were coming back up. And, and usually there's no one else. Like, we are the only people out there. There's a couple of old graveyards out there, like old family cemeteries out there. And we passed on a trail. This woman, just she appeared out of the blue with a hiking stick. She had regular civilian clothes on, and she was completely barefoot. Now, when I say that, that gives me shivers up my spine because we have sticky bushes. We have, I mean, to, to walk barefoot down the mountain like that. Now, when we get down to the beach, we take our shoes off. But to, I mean, and she was acting like nothing. It was so creepy. And I remember she walked by and we were like, is that mm -hmm. a witch? Like, <laughs> like, well, you know, you got to watch out for Spearfinger. Okay. And I bet you know Spearfinger. Are you familiar with her? No. But my Ooh. stomach just did a freaking flip. What is that? Okay, Spearfinger is a Cherokee witch, and she is um she's an old like an old hag, like a boo hag kind of. Uh, but hag she is. yeah, she's like an old she's an old witch, and she has a long finger. It's the spear finger, and she loves she loves to go up and and uh, surprise people, especially kids. She goes up behind them and sticks her finger in their back and pulls out their liver and then oh. eats it. Yeah. Well, this woman, unless 
she was dressed in like modern clothes. Like she looked, she looked like she had gone to what's the the, the clothing store my mother likes? Chico's is that what it's called? Chico's, yeah. Like, Middle aged older women, like she, but then she had no shoes on, and she literally, it was almost like she walked past us without even seeing us there. And this this trail is like this big, like we can't even walk side by side on the trail. We have to walk in a straight line. And it was the creepiest. And I mean, she didn't look like a ghost because she was full body. Like it was not like any ghost I've ever seen. It was like an actual person, like me, with hair, and she had like a mom haircut, like a, you know, a helmet haircut. Karen, Karen, with the aqua. I was thinking that too. Actually, I was thinking with the aqua. The Karen at one time. Yeah, we've all had the Karen. Yep, yep. So, but it was so, <laughs> and it has stayed in my head. Like, just the way she was dressed. She wasn't in hiking clothes. She had a stick. She had no shoes, and she walked past us without even acknowledging that we were there. It was so weird. weird. Well, maybe she's an introvert. You know. Could be. And, okay, so that's something that we have to look out for when we're doing our Bigfooting. Because in that area, there's something called the Barefoot Running Club. Okay. And I know you said it was really odd that she didn't have shoes on. See, we're out there looking for track lines of bare feet for Sasquatch. And uh, and then we come across a lot of barefoot tracks, barefoot feet, you know, no shoes. And, uh, and you have to be able to distinguish what's human and what's Bigfoot. Like Sasquatch. Well, you sure those aren't just feral people. I don't. I can't be positive. I don't know for sure. It's like I hate to say it this way. I say this in my head to myself all the time, and I can't believe I'm about to say it out loud because my mother would probably smack me upside the head. It makes my asshole pinch when I think about like walking on. Like it just gives you the heat. Like my feet would be so cut up and bruised. I mean, it just makes you like. Oh, like it, it's it's I good. Here. I'm not. I'm barefoot right now. I'm barefoot most of the day, but up there in those mountains, you couldn't pay know. me enough money to walk up that mountain barefoot. I would have bloody feet by the time I got to the top. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. And like my son can walk barefoot anywhere. His feet are tough as nails, but I've got those dainty little, you know, pedal feet like rose. I'm, they're like rosebuds. You know what I mean? No, like super I, soft. <laughs> I don't. You know, it's so funny because. My mom's family, I know hacks because in the low country, there is a whole phenomenon around hacks. So I'm very yeah. familiar with that. And growing up, going spending the summer, the summer times in the coast of South Carolina, my mom's family, I could be on the beach all day barefoot, no problem. My feet would be fine. But when I go to the beach in Florida, where my boyfriend's family lives, my feet get cut up so bad on that beach. And so I don't know if it's like an RH negative thing. Like there's so many freaky things about RH negative that maybe our, our skin is thinner. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. It really makes my butthole pucker when I think of people having to go walking around. Oh my gosh. That was- yeah. <clears throat> that's odd that she just didn't even acknowledge you though. Like that's just not like normal human behavior usually, you know. It's like nobody's out there. Like literally this summer, Jessica, I would love to take you and your son up there with us one day this summer because it's a, it's you could swim. There's like swimming holes up there. Um and literally the mo- the craziest thing we've ever had to look out for is snakes, poisonous snakes. Um that's it, because we have a dog, you know, so we have to make sure that he's not gonna get um touch a, a poisonous snake. But beyond that, like, it's really feels good to swim. We usually bring food and we hang out down there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so, and you like on the other side of the, of the water is South Carolina. So if you swim across, you can like touch South Carolina and come back, you know, um, it's, and it's right. So if you guys ever watched that movie deliverance, um, right. There's a famous scene where he says squill like a pig. It was shot (laughs) right there on that trail. So one of the more famous lines in that movie. (laughs) Right. Oh my God! What's crazy is I was at the Georgia Bigfoot conference. I spoke at it last year, or this this year actually, back in May. And uh, the little boy who played the banjo, he was there at the conference signing autographs. No way! Yeah, he's an older gentleman. I think he lives in Clayton. Yeah, he lives over there. I mean, they filmed it. I mean, they filmed most of it. And I don't know if you know this, Jessica, because you know the high school that I went to because we have mutual family in that area. Do you know that the guy who wrote the book Deliverance went to that high, my high school? No, I did yeah. not. He wrote it. And no. I will never forget my freshman year of high school. And I'm always hesitant to say the name because I don't have good things to say about that school at all. Um, my freshman year, there was a teacher 
that was quitting was so fed up at what was going on at that school. Apparently, and it's a private school. This is a private school. So for those of my friends watching from other countries, I know you have different words for this. A school where your, your parents pay money for you to go. And it's a boarding school too. I think he was a boarding student. And they send letters. I get them all the time for the alumni fund to have you send money back for their alumni funds, kind of like universities do. Well, apparently they had sent him a letter requesting a donation. And he wrote back to the school the most scathing letter about how horrific his experience was and that he will never send another penny. And I back, I back him 100%. Don't send money to that school. That school is satanic. It's horrific. Um, that letter, the only reason why I know that is because this teacher that got pissed off photocopied that letter and threw it all over the campus. Wow. So all the students could read it. And I was only 14 at the time. I don't even think I'd read the book Deliverance or seen the movie at that point. But, um, but yeah, I was the author of the book Deliverance. And um, yeah, and, and for those who don't know, it's a story. Basically, it's a story about a bunch of Atlanta boys that go up to Clayton for what, a, a boys weekend? I'm trying to remember the whole premise Something of it. Like that. It was supposed to be a manly weekend. And uh, they ended up getting accosted by some kind of feral, feralish people. Yeah. Yeah. Some hill, I would call hillbillies. Yeah. Hillbillies. Hillbillies. <laughs> It's not as bad. It's probably before Lake Burton, wasn't it? Because Lake Burton kind of, I think, changed that when they put that lake in, didn't they? I, I don't know. I am not. I don't know the whole history behind all that, so I'm not sure. Uh, I do know that uh, it, it, anytime you hear a banjo playing or if you're, like, out in the middle of the woods, and we always joke around, like, just watch out if you start hearing a banjo, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff, because it has some, it has some pretty, pretty weird connotations. After you watch that movie, you're never the same. Yeah. And there is kind of, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain it, Jessica, because I, I feel very Southern and I'm in Atlanta, but there is kind of this attitude that Atlanta is not the South. There's kind of this attitude from people outside of Atlanta that you're, you're not really Southern if you're from Atlanta. And I'm going to just share this quickly, guys. So Lake Burton, and I actually want to, in the new year, cover with you and our friend Angie. Angie has property up in Lake Burton. Um, there are these lakes I think they're all over the United States that, that are man-made. So they like drown out these towns and put lakes in. And I believe Lake Burton is one of those. And Lake Burton is owned by Georgia power, which is our electricity company. And um, it is called, what is it called? Uh, Buckhead, uh, the Buckhead beach or something. So Buckhead is uh, the area of Atlanta is where that's like our Beverly Hills. So it's where like the governor's mansion is very wealthy people live in, in Buckhead. And so they buy property or they actually rent property. I don't even think you could own property on Lake Burton. I think it's like a lease because it's owned by Georgia Power. And so it's very wealthy Atlanta people that have these houses on Lake Burton. And it's right in Clayton, Georgia. And so that might have changed a bit of the demographic of how people, the locals see, um, see Atlanteans. But yeah, in Deliverance, it's like they are the city boys. They've come up to, to Lake Burton for this weekend and they get their ass handed to them, literally, literally, <laughs> if you've seen that scene. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's and, you know, my uh, my boyfriend's ex's family had property in Lake Burton. And he said he always whenever he was there, he felt like his energy was just being drained out of him. Like he never he loves Clayton, but just did not like Lake Burton. So do you know oh any spooky God. stories around Lake Burton, Jessica? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've spent some time at Lake Burton and, uh, you know, I have one of my best friends, her grandparents own a house on the lake. So I have done plenty of swimming in Lake Burton. I have uh, gone, what do you call it, uh, wakeboarding and all that stuff at Lake Burton um, over the past few years, especially. Uh, so I think Lake Burton's awesome. Uh, it's beautiful. I don't know any stories about Lake Burton as far as it being haunted or anything like that. Just like, you know, like Lake Lanier. Um, yeah. But... But we do um, we do Bigfoot research around that area, okay? And uh, we actually do have one of our campsites is not too far from Lake Burton, okay? Um, so a lot of high strangeness. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of really weird energetics going on in that area. So it's not just the cryptids. I mean, we, we think that we may have had the kind of a run-in. Some of the team had a little run-in with Spearfinger at one point. On and it and it might not be like an tell us. Kind of level. Tell us now. What happened? Well, 
beautiful story to tell was some of the guys on the team because, you know, we, we do remote viewing. So we're remote viewers. So we experience things on a different level uh, than just this 3D reality. OK, so we hear something we can go in and kind of do a touch and go remote viewing session kind of of something. And, uh, and at one point one night there was a scream. Uh, the guys heard a scream. They um, they went into Theta. OK, one of them did. And uh, they did like a little touch and go remote viewing session right there on the spot. And uh, and it turns out, I believe Spearfinger might have been in the area uh, accosting a mama's Sasquatch and her baby. OK, so oh. stuff like that happens. Yeah. Um, so they didn't see Spearfinger there. OK, exactly. Like not in the 3D, but there was it was on an energetic level, like in another dimension or something but yeah. it was also in the third dimension because they could hear the the mama bigfoot screaming okay so spear finger so, will go after anything living not just human beings yes that's right i did not yes know yeah well i mean to me sasquatch are just big hairy humans basically okay they're, they're very human-like in a lot of ways so I know, I know some humans that could probably classify as as a sasquatch sasquatch mean to say but <laughs> yeah i know something could be a werewolf or dog man yeah i know some that might, might qualify but yeah. uh, you know they haven't found the beauty of waxing yet so <laughs> um but uh i'm oh actually gonna look more into the spear finger because i had never heard of this legend before you know and um, I, these legends fascinate me because i think you know i think and this is probably your experience i would i would assume jessica that a lot of people have this like want to take a very logical approach to folklore and legend mm -hmm. where oh it was just a story created to get kids in line or whatever i don't believe that like i don't know a parent psychotic enough that would create a whole story about a witch in the woods just to keep her kids in line right like i believe a lot of these these this folklore and this legend comes from truth comes from reality and the cherokee i will say with a lot of my research the cherokee did try to warn <laughs> us white people about a lot of things and we just did not listen to them that's right yeah <clears throat> so spearfinger is it's known all over the appalachians actually okay she is uh especially up in north carolina but uh but i gotta say that we were in that area when those guys were having that experience with what they considered probably could have been Spearfinger is what, what we've discussed before. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there have been times at night where I hear something like I, I, I pick up on energies and stuff. And there was one night, you know, you're, if you let your imagination get away from you out in the woods while you're bigfooting, it can be terrifying. Okay. And that's why we're so inoculated to a lot of the high strangeness out there so that we don't lose our crap okay if right. you know what i mean uh when we're out there and so there's one night where we don't use our flashlights we don't use headlamps we try not to when we're out in the woods late at night and uh and we're all sitting around um we split off into groups into small teams and uh, and i was out there with a couple of guys and one of the ladies um on this desolate road in the middle of nowhere and uh, and i kept hearing a tapping tap 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 and energetically i was picking up on spear finger like tapping her finger on a tree it was so loud i was like i know i know this is my imagination i had to like calm my mind because it could have terrified me had i let my mind go there do you know what i mean because it was like tap 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 tap, tap, tap. My, my mind goes there my mind's probably gonna go there tonight when i'm I, I mean last night i was by myself with my dog and um i literally slept with uh the hallmark channel on <laughs> oh because I was a little freaked out by myself, um, and and my boyfriend wasn't here. But I was like, and, and I kept thinking, is he gonna come back? Like, is he gonna come back alive? Like, is, yeah, you know, I I believe in it. Uh, I think, yeah. I, you know, I think Jessica. I think when you're born, when you grow up, and you're sensitive to the, I don't understand people who aren't sensitive to the paranormal. Like, I don't. That's confusing to me. Like, when I meet a person around my age, like forty, who doesn't believe in ghosts, I'm like. You mean you've never had an experience that's weird? Like you've never felt like someone was watching you? Like you've never had, because that's like a daily occurrence for me. And so I totally, you know, I try, even with the more malevolent energies, I try to have some level of respect just so they won't fuck with me, you know? Because it's, when you're fighting something unseen or something that's not normal to your dimension, it, it becomes 
it's hard, isn't it? Like, I don't know how you guys do it, how you guys keep your cool. Because I would be, like, shitting my pants every five minutes <laughs> running back to the car. Well, sometimes, like, your first reaction for most people, normal people, would be to ignore some of the things that we experience out there or to rationalize what it is. Okay, sometimes I feel like it's better just to accept it and acknowledge it. Okay, yeah. I know you're here. Uh, you're not going to do anything to me. And uh, I have just as much right to be here as you do. Okay, that's that's my attitude when I go out there. Um, you know, I'm not going to hurt you. You don't hurt me. We're all friends here. We don't have to be friends. Just don't hurt me. Okay. And uh, and that that's kind of the attitude that I keep. Uh, because otherwise, yeah, I would lose my stuff probably. Uh, it can be scary. But, uh, I mean, we've been out there at times where we've had, we're just having fun, hanging out at base camp. And uh, something comes up in our base camp behind all the tents and screams bloody murder at us. And uh, we don't know. We didn't know what it was. It wasn't a human. And it didn't sound like any animal I'd ever heard in my entire life. It didn't even sound like a Bigfoot. Um, but it ran behind all the tents. And then it continued to throw rocks and acorns at our tents all night. All night. Oh, uh, we were trying to sleep. Yeah, I think it was probably a Bigfoot, but we don't know for sure. Whatever it was, it was probably very young. It was, it was, uh, it was frustrated. Was <laughs> like, get out of here. Yeah, and you could hear it because it was kind of a windy night. So you could hear, you know, there's, you can hear um, like acorns falling from the trees, right? Like it goes, you can hear the trajectory, like from up, down. Duke. These yeah. things are going, pew. Like oh, going yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. our tents. when acorns fall, it's a very, it's a very distinct mm -hmm. girl. I literally would have been like, I'm getting in the car. I'm going to hotel. Where's the holiday end? Like, like, <laughs> no, that's all we're, you know, and not a single one of us slept that whole night. Okay. But we were all laying in our tents. Everybody, we had all put our tents a little closer together that night. Cause we were, we were, you know, having a lot of activity in the base camp. And, uh, and I remember at one point, the, the head of my team, he was like, and my tent was like right beside his. And uh, and I had scooted my my cot like to the very edge, like so I could be closer to him. Girl, I would have gotten, gotten, gotten out and gone and gotten in the tent with him. I'd be like, I know no. you're leaving. I know I'm taking, but I'm not leaving this tent. <laughs> I, well, well, okay, so here's the thing too. A lot of the guys on my team, they have tent cots, tent cots. So they're like, it looks like a coffin, basically. It's like, it's like a, a cot, like a one-man cot. And I was like a tent over it, super tight. I don't have one of those, okay? I have like a full out McMansion tent, okay? Like you could sit, like you could sleep eight people in my tent. I'm not kidding. And so you can imagine, like I had the, I was like in the corner side of my tent. I'd gone all the way over to the right hand side. I had my tent pushed up to the wall and I was right there. I mean, I, if I had like put my hand through my tent, I could have touched the head of my team's tent. Okay, like I was like, I was like, I I'm like, if I couldn't go to the tent with him, I would have been like, well, you're gonna have my head on your head the whole night. <laughs> I know. I, I should have been the whole team. Just don't just come put your tent cots inside my tent. Everyone sleep together. <laughs> As you're saying that, I keep thinking, no wonder the Yetis, the Bigfoots, they're probably watching you guys just as much as you're watching them. They're like, what is this spectacle? Like, what are these? They are. That's where the, we we are their entertainment. That's what we are. It's like it's you're entertaining yeah. each other. It's it's a it's a post symbiotic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> we're out there. We're just we're just all walking each other home, like you say. We're just out there trying to figure each other out, right? We don't know what we're doing, but we're out there having fun. But I remember at some point, the head of my team was like, because I mean, we we literally were like just listening to things, smacking our tent. We were kind of waiting for somebody to get like pounced on or something. We don't know. We were just sitting there listening. And observing and at some point he goes remember we do this for fun you know we're all being like terrorized in our tents we're just laying there waiting you know like who's gonna get eaten first you know that kind of thing he's like remember we do this for fun i am sure we have a therapist sitting watching us right now who's like we should unpack that we should unpack why you do this for fun it's awesome. I mean, I, I love it. You know, I would not have it any other way. The next day I was extremely tired. I had to drive home. I had not slept a wink. I had dark circles under my eyes, but it was such a great experience. It was so scary, but it was also like, wow, I survived that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was so, about to say, it's that adrenaline. And I think that's because I'm, I'm attracted to very macabre stuff. I'm attracted to like horror stories and all these things. And I think 
I think what it is, I think, you know, when we're living our lives in the matrix, so we get up, we go to work, we come home, we eat dinner, we do, we have every, it, it kind of becomes monotonous and we kind of forget we're alive. But when we're stuck and we're, when we're confronted with these stories that make our nervous systems, our heart rate speed up or the adrenaline kick in, it reminds us that there's so much more mystery to the world and that we're actually living beings experiencing this roller coaster. And I don't think anybody has, maybe the government knows everything and they're just not telling us, but you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's, um, we're just trying to figure it out. And it, again, it's so many people have had these experiences with Bigfoot, with the Sasquatch, with all these things that it's too many experiences to, for, for it not to be real. It's too many. It's too many. Yeah. You know, oh, yes. they're real. They're real. They're real. I can tell um, you, they're real. It's and it's wild because then comes the question: Where do they come from? Where are they? Why don't we see them all the time? You know, so it just opens up this wonder. You know, and I think that's the thing is when we're adults, especially when kids have wonder. Kids wonder. I mean, kids believe in. If you have kids watching, your son's not around, is he, Jessica? No. If you no, have kids I'm watching, sorry. cover their ears. Kids believe in Santa Claus. You know, it's beautiful. The 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 Easter Bunny. The they believe in magic, and so there's their whole world is wonder, and that wonder makes sense to them. But as we grow up, we lose that magic. We lose that wonder until it's presented to, with to us again, and then it brings us back to that life, right? So the Bigfoots and the Yetis are just doing us all a big favor because it's reminding us we're alive. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I I, re I was reminded that I was alive and that I could easily not be alive any second. <laughs> that was what I learned. But I made it. I was so proud. I woke up when, as soon as that sun started to come up. I was like, oh, I can go to sleep now, you know. Um, and I did sleep for a little bit. But yeah, it was it, it's a rush, honestly. And so it's kind of in a weird way, like it was it was exhilarating and it was terrifying at the same time. Does Bigfoot typically roam at night? Are they nocturnal? For the most part, yeah. We have more experiences during the nighttime, but they're out during the day too. Yeah. For sure. Especially yeah. like dusk and dawn. You know, maybe it's because like during the day, there's all sorts of other commotion going on and people are busy. So maybe any noises or things, as you said, you know, people could see somebody could see something out of their peripheral vision and just not even acknowledge it. You know, and not even, but at night, I guess it's more, your senses are more heightened because everything else is asleep. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So it's yes. more, it's, you know. Yeah. They like to come and check us out around the fire and they like to walk through the base camp late at night and stuff like that. So do you leave them gifts? Is there anything that they like? I don't personally, but cause it's not, it's not a good idea to gift. Okay. Right. In my opinion. Uh, but people do. I mean, I have a one of the guys goes out with us. He's left rotisserie chickens and stuff for them. But here's the problem with that. Day? Yes. I mean, within minutes, they're gone. Um, I mean, people leave peanut butter. They leave mirrors and toys and do you name like it. Mirrors? Are they vain? Do they like yes. a mirror? I just don't think that they've had mirrors before. So people, it's almost like an experiment that some people like to do is like leave a mirror out for them. Um, I, I don't do that because... A lot of the times when, when people are out doing Bigfooting, it's at a national park or a state park. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and families go and camp there with their kids and stuff. And I just don't think it's appropriate to be leaving things out for an apex predator, basically. Okay. They're, we're not at the top of the food chain out there. Okay. No. Uh, in an area where there's going to be children potentially or unsuspecting families, uh, because you leave some stuff out, well, those beings whatever come out there if they're sasquatch or even dog man or whatever uh they go out there they start expecting that kind of stuff and when a family's out there and doesn't have that and doesn't know they might get terrorized all night because they're those sasquatch are looking for a treat yeah well and also as you're saying that too i'm even thinking about like even taking the sas the bigfoot out of it out of the equation they always tell you in national parks not to feed the animals because they don't want the animals mm -hmm. to, to become dependent upon you for food and I know my, my dog is a rescue from India and he's a street dog. We rescued him as a small puppy though. So he's never had to hunt for his food, but the dogs that we bring back that have lived on the streets, they are hunters. They know how to hunt rats. That's what they eat are rats and sometimes cats. Um, but the minute you start feeding them as you do, please feed your animals, but, and, and you domesticate them, they lose that ability. 
they start to lose that that heightened sense of ability. Now, with that being said, if if um, worse came to worse and we were in an, uh, an, uh, an Armageddon, an apocalypse, I think my dog would remember how to hunt very quickly. Um, but you know, but it's not something for a wild animal that is totally dependent on their own natural abilities. You don't want to take that away from them. You want them to be able to. They're built animals like we keep our our. We're vegetarian, but our dog we eats totally raw meat diet because um, my friend Catherine is an animal biologist, and most wild animals are are animals in general who were at one point wild. They have the ability to digest raw meat and bones because they're obviously not grilling shit out in the, the wild, you know. So when you start giving them cooked food, it changes their biochemistry as well. It makes them sick. So um, and so. We are our uh, ser- our freezer looks like a serial killer lives here because it's just a bunch of frozen meat for the dog. <laughs> my, Jessica, have you ever been to the DeKalb Farmers Market? Oh, that was like my favorite place. Yeah, I love their their salad bar and their hot bar. Yeah, that's my favorite. I used to shop there every week, and I totally miss that place big time. So I'm going to pull it up for you guys so you can see this. And when I so when I say fa- Farmers Market, sometimes I think people think I'm talking about like some fruit stands in the side of the road. I mean, it's huge. It is huge. It's freezing in there. The whole thing is like a refrigerator. You can get foods from like all over the world. You can get organic foods. Yeah, they have all... My uh, boyfriend will go there. We used to live closer, so he would go like once a week, but now he got our, now he goes like once a month because it's a little bit further now from where we live. But y'all, so the, the butchery area... <laughs> and this is so... So I, I overshare and my boyfriend undershares. What I mean by this is he will go to the butcher at the DeKalb Farmer's Market to get our dog fresh meat. And he'll ask for like all the pig hearts, all the, because like, that's a, something that our dog can eat. He'll ask for like all of them. And all these women will sit there and start looking at him like, y'all in this neck of the woods, people are doing all sorts of voodoo and hoodoo. And I was like, you don't tell them it's for our dog. He's like, no, make, let them wonder. <laughs> Hey, I used to eat, I used to eat chicken hearts back when I, I had a, a boyfriend from Brazil for a while. And, um, and he, that was a delicacy where he was from. And so, uh, he would, they would barbecue chicken hearts and oh. I, I like those to eat them, to eat them. No voodoo here. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, it was, just it's nutrition. Funny. Cause Todd's, he'll go and they'll give him all the stuff. And he said, people will just like, look at him like, what the hell you're getting? And it'll be like, need the extra blood. Cause the blood is good, good for the dog too. <laughs> And he, I'm like, I would be explaining. I'd be like, it's for our dog. He's on a raw diet. Like, I would be over explaining. He's like, no, let them wonder. Let them wonder what's going on. That's fun. I like, I like his style. That's fun. Let them wonder. Yeah, I'll take, um, I'll take all the organ meat, please. Yeah, I'll take all the organ meat. Um, a, do you have a few goat? I mean, next time, just ask for a goat's head and see what they say. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, that just reminded me of something. I don't know. Quick commercial break here. When I was in sixth grade. Uh, we had like a fall festival and my class was in charge of the haunted house. Okay. I was, I was 12 or 11 and, uh, my mom went to the local butcher shop and came back with two pig heads <gasps> and a whole bunch of pig's blood. It was like real blood, real pig's heads. And, uh, and I, I grew up out in the country out in West Georgia. I'm the MVP of the sixth grade haunted house. <laughs> it was messed up. I can't even believe that my school allowed me to use those. Like we put them out on hay bales and like at the entrance of the haunted house. Yeah, it was so bad. Girl, I, I can't believe it. We're from the South. I'm telling y'all, I keep telling y'all who are not from the South, we're eccentric. Like that doesn't shock me that this, that real stuff. this Southern lady, the Southern belle, I'm sure your mother had her pearl necklaces on and everything. And she went and bought some pig heads and some pig blood for the, so, for the yeah. that's the South, you guys. Like that's not weird. That's not no. weird. That's the South. Although I would have been traumatized. <laughs> it was authentic. I remember that it was very authentic. And that was back when like Freddy Krueger was popular. And so I dressed up like a little girl that jumped the rope and saying that one, two, Freddy's coming for you and stuff. I mean, that was, that was my sixth grade year. Yeah. Pig's heads and all that. Gosh. I, mean, I will say you give it, got to give it to our Southern mamas. My mama never did that. My mama did tell me when I was way too young. <laughs> Do you know the story of the gray man, Jessica? Have you ever heard the story of the gray man? Mm-hmm. Not a South Carolina thing. So in South Carolina, on the barrier islands, specifically Polly's Island, 
um, there's this ghost story about the gray man. Now, Polly's Island, uh, from what I, so my, one of my mom's sisters growing up was very sick. My Aunt Mary Jo, she's passed away since then, but she had kidney problems. So a lot of, she was born sick. So during the summertime, my mom and her other two sisters often would go spend um, time on Polly's Island with uh, one of their aunts. And my, and when I was a, when I was coming along as a kid, we never went to Polly's Island. My mother would like not go there. So I don't know what the hell happened to her on that island. It's a very haunted island. Well, the story of the gray man says that any time that there is a thunderstorm off of the, co now this is the Atlantic coast. So this is a rough, the Atlantic ocean is rough. Um, if there was a hurricane coming, this man dressed in gray will go around the, 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 the doors and Polly's Island is a pretty small island and knock on the doors to warn people to get off the island. And so any time, and when I was growing up, so we would be on, so I, the first time I saw a beach with a lot of people on it was when I lived in Los Angeles after college, because we were always on family property, like it's small, like it was just us on the beach. So I never thought of the beach as being something populated. And so we would be on at night and anytime like the wind picked up or it was raining and the rocking chairs would start rocking, my mother would be like, guess the gray man's coming. I swear to God, that's the reason why I had nightmares as a child. I was terrified of the gray man because she would just talk about the gray man all the time. The gray man, I'm going to actually pull because people have taken pictures of this that I think are actually real. Um, uh, gray man, South Carolina. And so at least he's a good spirit. I mean, some of these are obviously do not, not they're photoshopped, but I uh, like this one before I'd seen many times this picture. You guys can, obviously that's photoshopped. Um, but this picture I've seen before many, many times. Um, it's It was on Unsolved Mysteries. They did an Unsolved Mysteries about the gray man. Um, here's, they have a picture here of him circling the gray man, warning people about, here's right here, about the hurricane that's coming. And there's all these different myths as to who he is. And the funny thing is, is that most of these like shadow type hat men we see as being like, I've seen the hat man before. Like they're scary as, as, but the difference between the hat man and the gray man, like if you see the gray man, he looks like an apparition. The hat man does not. The hat man looks like a full on, like you can't see through him. So, um, and the, and the hat man is not a good sign. Like it's, it's usually pretty, a pretty dark sign, but uh, the gray man warns people to get off the island. Bryce. Okay. I was given the hat man as a blind remote viewing target. Really? Okay. I did. Yes. Uh, my buddy Barry Littleton gave me that as a blind remote viewing target. And it was like shadow people to like, we covered shadow people, but it was like the hat man. And, uh, and my data was talking about time travelers. No, I swear. Yeah. Weird, right? The freakiest, the first time I ever saw a hat man, I was 24. I'd seen shadow people my whole life, my whole life. But the hat man, I was 24 years old. I was living in Los Angeles. It was daytime. It was early morning. The sun was coming through the window. My boyfriend had gone to work and I was just starting to wake up. And I heard someone come into the room and I thought it was my boyfriend at the time, not the current one. That makes me, that makes me sound like a, like a tramp, but anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, man, it's okay. I've had fun in life, guys. I've had a real fun life. Let's just, um, um, I heard someone walk into the bedroom and I thought it was him. I thought I was like, and I remember saying, I was laying there kind of waking up and I was like, did you forget something? And he didn't respond. So I sat up in bed and there was a hat man standing right in front of the dresser like you couldn't and I like screamed and then I laid back down and pulled the sheets over my head and then I po poked my like like a like a kid and I poked my head up and it was gone it was the well, freakiest thing that's awesome I, I mean it's scary I'm sorry that happened to you however you can talk about it today that's really cool yeah. you actually experienced that I know I know several people that have seen the hat man yeah, um, I've seen shadow people before. I've seen like the shadow beings and, you know, I, I do like ghost investigations too and stuff. Um, shadow beings are like blacker than black. 
Like it's like yeah. you, you got like the nighttime and then like there's, you can see a black yeah. shadow. Like it's not even a shadow. It's a mass, like a black mass. It's, okay. Those that, are scary. Yeah. That's why I, yeah, I, I, I've actually used that. It's like, it's not black. It's, it's a, it's like, you know how people have near death experience say that the light that you walk into is not explainable to human beings. It's kind of like the same with the hat man, and the shadow people, that the darkness is not like a humanly darkness, but that makes sense that they're time travelers because they actually like, you can't see through them. They, they're like a 3d entity that's in the room and they're, they're human. They're humanoid. They're like, the size of a, a full grown human. So were they, did you get it? They were good or bad or what? Neither. They're indifferent. They're not, they're not good. They're not bad. They're neither. They're just, they just are. Um, which is really interesting. And, you know, and I have people that have asked me over and over again, I get this question so often are remote viewers, shadow people. Okay. Is a shadow person, a remote viewer, oh, somebody that's remote viewing. And I used to say, no, hell no, that's not a, that's not a remote viewer. But the more that I've, I've kind of researched the, after I'd, I've done these targets and I found out what my target was, um, I'm like, wow. I mean, it could be like an astral projection of some sort, or if that data said time travelers, I mean, that's what a remote viewer is basically. So why, okay. so why would then, so when you experience a hat man, if, if there's a time traveler that came to my apartment in Los Angeles when I was 20, why, why was it in my apartment? Was it just an area they were traveling to and they landed in my apartment or there's a specific reason they were, they're looking at certain people? I probably have specific, there's no coincidences in my opinion. I mean, you're, you're talking about it to the world right now. So it's important, right? So well, maybe it was part of the journey. That. I know I'm asking you this on a show, so I'm putting you on the spot, Jessica. <laughs> okay. There's something else that happened in that apartment that kind of ties to that. If I gave you coordinates, would you remote view it for a show? Of course. Oh, it might have been me that was the hat man then, if I'm going to be remote viewing that. Okay. Isn't that weird? It's a different situation, but I think they're connected because there's something else that was happening in that Apart. Do you see how this works though? Like, isn't that weird that like I can go, you can give me some coordinates. I don't know where I'm going. I'm doing a blind target. And then back then you saw a, a shadow figure. What if that's me in the future? I'm a time traveler. Okay. I've actually um, seen myself remote viewing myself before. Okay. Um, now I didn't actually see myself. I saw a bunch of sparkly lights in the corner of my room and I didn't know what they were at the time. And then later I was like, oh, wow, that was me remote viewing myself. See, that makes sense to me. I would, I think you would show yeah. the sparkly lights. I, don't think you would show lights. I was, <laughs> it looked like fairy lights. Sparkle girl, no one's going to steal your sparkle. You're going to show you. the sparkly lights. I actually, as I was thinking of the situation, I wrote digits down to give you because I am not okay. Because you guys, and it's so funny, Jessica, I have put out a while ago, I wanted to cover shadow, I've covered shadow people before, but I wanted to do it again. And then stuff happened. So I never, so maybe this was why we didn't get to cover it right away. Because yeah. I have to do a second episode with you on this, because this is fascinating. I've never considered that these were time travelers. I've never considered that these were um, anything from our dimension. So I'm very fascinated now because that would explain a lot if it is what I'm thinking it is now because you just mind blown. So well, I'm glad to do that for you. Girl, girl. <laughs> I know you never know what's going to come out of our conversations, Bryce. You never know. And isn't that beautiful that we live in a time and an age where we can just be completely open and honest and know that mm -hmm. some people are going to judge us. Yes, but our audience isn't because they've all had the same experience as we've had. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've already done a show on this before. It's on my channel, The Cryptid Hunters, but it was where Barry, it, my friend had given me some uh, some blind targets. And uh, and so all I'm giving her a set of numbers. And uh, and then we went on, we don't, we don't really talk about it before the show, like what my data is, like whatever information I get out of those numbers. And so we'd go live, we go live on these shows and then I reveal the data to him. I, sometimes I'll send it to him, but I don't actually go over the data. And so it's really fun watching us like bouncing ideas off of each other and uh, revealing things, uh, you know, his information based with, you know, mixed with my data. It's really cool. It's really cool getting to do stuff like that. So, um, I, it's, it's a learning experience for me, big time. You guys, I'm going to put Jessica's channel down in the description box, and also check out the Mara Murray that we that she remote viewed like last week. 
um, because that is quite the stuff you picked up. Like when you sent me, cause you didn't know, I just sent you some numbers. Like you had no idea if it was going to be a missing person, a, a paranormal, whatever, you know, and you nailed it. Um, especially with the, well, the opinion that I had of what happened to her. And I think the consensus of what most people think happened to her. And I'm going to add, I know we're coming up at an hour now, guys. So I'm going to go and advertise this. If you are not on Gnostic TV, that is, I'm doing the Esoteric Explorer series on Gnostic, which is exclusive content just for Gnostic. I know Jessica's going to be providing some content for Gnostic as well. But Jessica's also done one episode on my series and she's going to be doing a second episode on my series we're going to be recording it this friday so hopefully we'll go up next week on gnostic once it goes through the producers the producers channel um and that i'm really excited about i have not told you anything at all about this have i jessica no i have no idea what it is so it'll be fun and I already released part one to gnostic tv so of the case that jessica is and i guess because you've already remote viewed it right jessica Oh, that's the target you gave me. Yes, I remote viewed those numbers right after our last show that we did. So, and I have not sent you the data yet, but I have it. Can't wait. So, since I can go ahead and tell you guys, if you're on Gnostic TV, if you're already on Gnostic, you watch part one. It's called The Creatures of the Night on Gnostic TV, part one. Jessica's going to be part two. That's that's the only indicate. That's the only thing I've given her so far is the title "Creatures of the Night" because I just gave her some numbers. So um, so go watch part one because Jessica's part two, her remote viewing of what actually happened in this story um is going to be uh the next episode for the Esoteric Explorer series, which I'm super 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 excited about. Now, once again, you guys, I Jessica, of course, you're going to come back because I want to do a full on Hat Man. And Shadow Man episode with you. And I'm going to give you these coordinates for Esoteric Atlanta on YouTube, guys. Not for Gnostic, but for, for YouTube. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys watching right now to do me a really big favor for this next episode. I know some of you guys emailed me your stories. But if you have enough space in the comment section, will you put your stories, if you're comfortable sharing them, of your Shadow Man experience or your Hat Man experience. And maybe at our next episode, we can read some of them out loud to the audience because i do think it helps jessica right like when you grow up being a little weird and having experiences and all of a sudden you meet other people who've had the same experience it gives you confidence doesn't it it does yeah because we're not all alone in all yeah. this you're yeah. not crazy you're not hallucinating somebody else had the same experience that you did um mm -hmm. I, I there's another creature that i'm thinking about now too that i saw in la that i um it was a black creature with red eyes. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. As I, as I say this, um, and they came in threes, and I would see them in LA all the time. These like they would hiss, and they had red eyes, and they'd come in threes. Hmm. So, um, isn't that? So we've all had these experiences, guys. So, um, so you know, we're not alone. You're not crazy. Um, I had someone tell me once after an experience I had someone who had experienced a lot of paranormal stuff too. The first thing she said to me when I was explaining something, she goes, I believe you. And just having somebody say that made a huge difference. So for all you guys watching right now who have had experiences with the shadow man, the hat man, any type of paranormal experience, Bigfoot, whatever it may be, we believe you. Absolutely. And so feel free to share those stories, guys, so we can dive deeper into this, like, Cause I, Jessica, my mind is blown. Like the, the fact that they're time for like that, that is like blowing my mind because it makes sense. It, it makes sense. It's logical, right? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a, a MIB, a man in black potentially. Yeah. 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 Why not? Exactly. Why not? Why couldn't they be time travelers? I don't know. Why? That's what the data said. I didn't just come up with that. I mean, I guess I did just come up with that out of nowhere. So it's remote viewing. I just write stuff down when I'm in my session. Whatever comes into my consciousness, you know, it's it was part of the data. That yeah. makes so much sense. Well, guys, again, we Christmas is right around the corner, you guys, and I I know um, a lot of us on this channel do like to sw support small businesses, especially at Christmas time. Um, when you purchase from a small business, you're not only getting a product that's been created and made with love from the heart, but you're you know, this is the person you're supporting. You know, this is the the family. This is the mom you're supporting. So, um, so what's that great sign that someone that people leave out? Like when you buy something from a corporation, you're helping a 
CEO buy another beach house. When you buy from a small business, you're helping a parent send their kid to dance lessons. And so, and this stuff is gorgeous. Like every time you post on Instagram, I'm just like, God, this stuff is beautiful. Uh, Thank and, so, you. and there's more on the website, guys. I'm sorry. I can't remember my password to Instagram to sign up to pull more up. Um, and my computer is just is so old it's not pulling up the pictures on etsy so i will put all that the etsy link is right here you guys so i'm going to put all this down in the description box below um so that you can look for uh if you want to find a great present for someone in your life this christmas that has value and meaning to it too you know not just some like cheap thing that the person's going to forget about in a month but something that actually has value and meaning um shop with jessica now jessica do you ship internationally I do. Bryce, thank you so much for doing this. You are the sweetest. I, I appreciate it so much. And uh, yes, I do. I ship internationally. Absolutely. So um, yeah, and I usually ship same day too. because I get excited when I get a little ding on my phone that I made a sell. So and I also have uh, some of my jewelry, some of the bigger pieces I have on my website, the cryptid uh, And that's, uh, that's, that's my, my, my website. It doesn't have a whole lot of jewelry on my website, but I have some of like, Squat, I have a squash blossom or two and this necklace that I'm wearing is actually listed there and uh, a couple of other um, like the bigger pieces are over there on my website. I just pulled so. her website up guys. Um, again, my computer, whoops, I got it. Hold on one second. My, my laptop up on right now is really old. So I was able to pull the website. It's always a fingers crossed that I get the website to pull up. So this is her website guys. I'm going to put this down in the description oh, no. box. As oh, well. that's my Spreaker, I think. That's my Spreaker account. Oh, where, what's so your funny. website? Y'all go, y'all go follow me on Spreaker too. <laughs> oh, did I not do the right? Listen, I'm so okay. bad with technology. It's amazing. I actually have a YouTube channel. All oh right. my gosh, I'm I am way more low tech than you are. Okay, so we're we're in a competition to who's a lower tech. Okay, it's probably me. I can promise. <laughs> I, I can't even remember my freaking. It's the cryptidhuntress.com. You, everybody, y'all you just go to the cryptidhuntress.com and, uh, and you just hit the shop link at the very top. Uh, you can That's where you can get all my links, all my social media. And uh, yeah, there's my website. Oh all my the, gosh. Bro, all of this. All of this. I've got it pulled up. So the, the Spreaker website, the uh, Etsy <laughs> shop, this, everything is going to be down in the description box below. Listen, um, Jessica, Jessica, I have the coolest subscribers and I've got a lot of subscribers that are international. I mean, we've got oh, some yeah. badass people living over in Europe and England, Australia. We got a lot of Australians, Australians. I feel like us and the Australians as Americans, Australians and Americans have a lot in common um, and Canadians as well. Um, so we got a lot of really cool people, you guys. And how cool would that be if you, uh, if you do live international to get a loved one, a Christmas present that's based in native American, um, folklore and culture, not folklore, but culture. And, and you know, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It that's is. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot. I do. I offer tarot and Oracle card readings too. That's on there at the very top. Uh, and, uh, and I have a special right now, if you type in holiday, I think it's holiday. Um, I'll have to double check on that holiday. You get like twenty five dollars off your uh, oracle readings right now. Your tarot readings. So, um, <laughs> you I, got a going. You yes. have cards? I read cards. Yes, do I do it cards, reading. like gift cards for. Yeah. I, yes. Uh, well, you just you if, when you purchase one, um, you just it's all digital or whatever, and then um, you send me an email, and then yeah, you can do gift cards. Absolutely, I offer those because that's a great absolutely too. Like, especially if you got someone in your life that's kind of woo-woo and you don't know what to get them. Um, yes. a, tar a Target gift card just doesn't do it for the woo-woo people. Like, how cool is that? Like, I'm, I'm always down for stuff like that. So, so you guys, I'm again going to put all of this stuff. Crystal's here. I mean, we got so many people. Oh, new products coming soon. <laughs> yeah, all it's my, it's all one page. Here we go. All my people, all my people love this stuff so you are in good company here if you we're all a little weird on this channel we wear that with pride we wear that with pride so you guys i'm going to put all of these links down in the description box below if you look under show notes um that's where that will be i know sometimes youtube will do funky things they'll update their platform i know if people have had a problem with the description box some so if you go to the description box and i i am terrible at technology too you have to hit the down arrow or the show more button and it will pull the whole description box up. That is not anything Jessica and I can control. That's the platform that does that. So you just have to hit that button to be like, I can't get the whole, 
you just have to hit the down arrow or the show more button and that will pull up everything you guys so um so what's going on in the cryptic hutris when's your next show jessica what are y'all talking about uh, <clears throat> well it depends on when this airs okay uh if this is airing on thursday this is airing thursday, thursday is tonight it's tonight i have a show tonight uh, my remote viewing show and uh yeah 8 p.m eastern on the cryptid huntress over on youtube and on it's on facebook too if you go to my facebook page so uh but yeah go to youtube and then i'll put it on rumble tomorrow that is so cool you guys i love eight o'clock you were usually in bed but i always get bumped i love re-watching live shows and like reading the chat because it's so fun to see what other people are contributing to the conversation so if you guys join her to uh, thursday night just to make that clear thursday night cryptid huntress on youtube live you do that every thursday right a live show at eight yes i do i have live shows every wednesday at 1 p.m eastern thursday at eight and then i'm over at spaced out radio on the weekends and uh i, I used to do saturday and sunday night at spaced out radio now I, i'm just going to be doing sunday nights from here on out over it's there it's totally you know, i'll put i'll ping that down in the description box to you guys because that is a fun you. show we had fun i feel i don't think i slept that night because we talked about black eyed kids and i was like Hoop the whole night so <laughs> you're so great we had so much fun with you on that show thank you for being my guest that was so oh, fun i loved it i loved it but you guys go follow all of those links um it's incredible work that a lot of people are out there doing and again it just makes you feel better to know that you're not alone you're not crazy i think most people in this world have literally had paranormal experiences they don't want to talk about you know so um, so you're not crazy right well, thank you so much for doing this, Jessica. I am so excited. I can't wait to see um, how, how many of our subscribers can show off their jewelry. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Thank you. And uh, and guys, we'll be we'll be looking forward be looking forward to the black hat black men black hat shadow people episode to come. And again, once again, if you're on Gnostic TV, we will be shooting the part two. For the creatures of the night episode this friday and then depending on the how long the producer takes it'll probably be up next week all right you guys well have a wonderful wonderful evening you guys zeno 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 take a shot for our friend doug would have loved you jessica he oh. was a weirdo just like us he he had that woo -woo, that woo woo ness as well so um he would have really 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 liked you so here's to you doug zeno cheers doug cheers doug Next time, maybe I'll get some wacky tobacco for you, Doug, Doug, even though I'm not a big fan of it. But just, just to hit that bong for you, my friend. So anyway, Jessica, give your family all my love. And we will talk to all you guys very soon. Bye, everybody.